Hi everybody, welcome back to the Horn Hangouts. How was your weekend? I started my weekend, as you know, with a bang at Stefan Dor's house, cooking, well, he was cooking, papaya salad and chocolate coulant. And I loved getting all the photos from you of all the people that cooked with us and from all the people that drank with us. That was also good fun. Um, I was exhausted afterwards. I don't know, how <laughs> Stefan was as well. It was quite an event. So today we have my other favorite Stefan with us, Stefan Yatsilski. Welcome back to the Horn Hangouts. Thank you very much. It's great to be here, Sarah. Thank you for having and, me. Yes. And it's a pleasure. Thank you for wearing your T-shirt. And actually, you tell us what you've got to do today. We haven't got you for too long today, have we? Well, I have ten, a tennis uh, a training with my team at, at 4 o'clock. But fortunately, the, the club is around the corner, basically. So we'll... We have time to talk a little bit. You know, we've got time to serve up some questions. Hey! <laughs> so it's great to see you all. So many people on the chat already, Stefan. Matthew Hyslip says, hi, dear Sarah and Stefan. Francis, hello from Warsaw. Sam Holbert from UK. Um, Selena's back again. Hadley um, says, hi, Sarah and Stefan. Greetings from Boston. We need to know who Stefan's favorite tennis player is. Well, who else, huh? Who else could it be but... The goat? Well, I have two. I would have to say there are two that I really, really admire. And those would be uh, Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal. Both of them are incredible sportsmen, incredibly genius players. And they just have a, an attitude that uh, just, well, I really think they have a great attitude to the game. Always gentlemen, always giving their 110%. Uh, so I would have to say those two, and uh, judging from their records, they, they have done pretty well over the years, one must say. Who are you for then when you're watching a match between the two of them? Oh, that's difficult because I like <laughs> them both so much. I have to see what the situation is and, uh, you know, if, I think, you know, some games, if it's like the, the French Open on clay, then, then, you know, it's good to see uh, Nadal um, on his surface do well. And, and but Roger Federer has become such a, um, a legend, you know, if he's playing on a, on a faster surface, um, then I'm very happy if, if Roger, you know, who's ever playing the best, whoever deserves it, I think uh, then I can be, be happy with that. Gail Williams and I would marry Roger Federer if he asked. Well, even if he didn't ask, we'd marry him tomorrow. Anyway. <laughs> Stefan, you can put the racket down until you have to leave. If, okay. um, if, if you, I know I told Stefan to get, get a, get a tennis racket one second before the hangout started. Stefan, Michael Buckwalter said yesterday would have been Dennis Brain's 99th birthday. That's a little bit of trivia for oh, wow. you. Yeah. The he hero. My heroes. Really. Yeah. He's like the Roger Federer of horn players. I well, one of them. So, yeah. yeah, totally. Um, so that's your favorite. Um, Stefan, what do you think? Uh, can I start out with a question um, from sure. me? The similarities between tennis playing and horn playing. Okay, well, two of them are activities where one has to perform a specific action at a specific time. Like when you're playing horn, you're sitting along the orchestra and then part comes along and you have like maybe a solo and you get ready to play and you have to sit, get ready, you breathe and you're ready and stay relaxed, but breathe and now it's a matter of timing and tennis is also it's a matter of timing you know with with us as um playing horn players whether we feel like like it in that particular second to play a certain note but this is all uh this is we this is our job that's what we get paid for and so it's a matter of, of absolute timing in in it, a train if a train comes uh you know, 10 seconds too late to the station, I think, oh, how punctual, how wonderful. If we play our solo 10 seconds too late, even if it's perfectly right, people are going to be very, um, <laughs> perhaps very upset. You know, only 10 seconds. And in tennis, it's also a matter of hitting the ball um, at exactly the right time. Uh, one has a little bit of leeway, but not too much. But once they hit the perfect shot, then one has to have, it's a matter of timing. That's yeah. so much in life. Yeah, totally. Stefan, your daughter-in-law, Doro, is watching. Hi, Doro. 
Hi, nice Jonathan. to see you. And um, and Jonathan Weglup has joined us from Hamburg. Hi. Well, not actually. Have you started your new job yet at WDR, Jonathan? Let us know. Nice to see you. Um, so many people also. Efron Patrick from Toronto. Vincent, hi from Annecy. Gail Williams is watching. Gail, we love you. Okay. And you and I adore Roger Federer, don't we? Um, but also, uh, Stefan, Jez Bushel is here. Hello from Brum, from Birmingham. And Jez um, told me a nice story about you playing Siegfried Horncall in the middle of the night, every night, in some camp. A oh, Roland, Bonhoeff Roland's it. <laughs> well, I can't really seem to remember that, but if he says so, it's great. And he said I hit the high C every time, so I'm very happy about that. Jez, Jez, can you please write in a, a few more details about that time? Because we, we'd like to know. <laughs> Gail agrees. She says many aspects of tennis and horn playing are the same. Thanks, Stefan. Uh, Stefan, wouldn't you also say that the mental aspect of it, they even wrote a book about it, the in, inner game of tennis was a adapted. Of fact, yeah. This book by Timothy Galway, The Inner Game of Tennis. I read this uh, this book before my audition for the Berlin Philharmonic. I was living this book. Me too. Time, non-judgmental awareness. And it put me into such a good frame of mind for this audition that I really could play my best. And I really think this book, uh, this attitude, way of looking at things, uh, has helped me so much over the years. Yeah. And then, then when I read the book about tennis playing, I thought, wow, you know, I had all played tennis before a little bit, but I thought, wow, tennis, this must be a really cool sport. So then when, when uh, it was like the big boom of tennis in Germany with Boris Becker and Steffi Graf and everyone in my ortho, about 20 people of my colleagues that were playing. So I joined in and, and you know, I just really uh, was addicted to tennis and I played just, you know, almost every day. And, uh, um, Stefan, did you know, Matthew Heisip told us, if the Cincinnati Symphony horn player Dwayne Duggar had to choose between a tennis career and horn playing, he chose the horn. But did you, did you know him? No, I never met him. Wow. Well, there you go. That's a tennis partner for our next Cincinnati tour. Cincinnati Symphony, huh? Yeah, Cincinnati Symphony. Okay. And um, F1 Patrick, well, hi, morning, F1 Patrick, um, wants to know what is one aspect of horn playing you find you have improved with skills learned through tennis or other sports? I think it's a matter of like dealing with stress situations when, you know, there are certain times and certain concerts where you really have to perform something at a certain level and, and you're, one is under stress and one has to deal with these situations and not become freaked out by it, but realize, okay, the cameras are running and everyone is watching me and I'm going to play this now and I want to play it right. And it's the same thing, you know, in tennis, if you have, um, you know, there's a, you've played a, a point, it's a very important point that you need to get and you've played to an advantage and you just have an easy shot, you have to put it in the open court. And that is the same kind of thing as, uh, as when you're playing horn, even if the note is not easy, something like, let's say, Oberon, it's not difficult, it's just by itself. So one has to, to uh, make the distinction what is actually difficult by itself and what becomes difficult because of the situation one has to deal with while this is going on. I, I've always been in awe of the sports people, like the tennis players at the last shot of Wimbledon or the golfers that have just that one little putt to get it in and one little putt away from $100 million or however much they earn. What, what goes through people's minds at that moment? Probably nothing. <laughs> ideally, the, that, ideally it's nothing if you can get if you can shut out the background noise in your mind and just concentrate on that thing which you know i'm usually able to do that um then it's okay but if you are the kind of person that is thinking about other things and it's it's and it wasn't that one doesn't get focused on stage then that one can that can lead to unnecessary mistakes there's a very good question here from Gabriel Sieber. Thank you for that, Gabriel. He says he has a question because of the watching the seam in the inner game book, you know, watching the seam. Yes, yes exactly. Um, yeah. Um, what thing or thoughts do you have? Do you have to focus on while horn playing? Do you do you have watching the seam, watching the valve? I don't know. Uh, some, sometimes uh, in certain situations, if I feel stressed, sometimes it helps if I just concentrate on the actual notes on the page. Of course, I have to remember to be looking a little bit ahead because it's dangerous to be focused only on the notes one is playing. But 
just to focus on the page sometimes can help. Some people like to look at their fingers, watch their valves. I know Radovan told me that, like to watch his fingers. Can you, can you just, if for people that aren't familiar with this watching the seam, um, because I don't think they mention that in the inner game of music, but it's a big thing about the inner game of tennis book. And you guys, if you haven't got these books, you need these books. Um, I, I reference these books all the time. I, I, they are really fantastic. Ah, yeah, then maybe Stefan can- <laughs> Watching the seam is basically when the tennis ball is coming, it's a way of focusing one's eyes on the rotation of the ball. Uh, one has to understand the spin in tennis in order to win. And spin, one, the sooner one recognizes the spin on the ball that's coming toward you, the more, the sooner you realize what this ball, how this ball is going to behave once it bounces, or if you take it in the air as a volley, what you need to watch out for. So this is like a, a way of really focusing. So what can we, how can we put that into horn, horn men's, horn women's, horn people's terms? Um, because sometimes when I, the conductor is conducting and I see a solo coming up, what, what's about to hit me is panic. <laughs> I think we all know that feeling. And that's the moment where you have to stop focus and put those thoughts somewhere else. And if we don't have a ball coming towards us, although sometimes it feels like it, um, how would you suggest putting well, that into horn people's with terms? The, with the tennis ball, you think of maybe you're on the ball, you're traveling with the ball, riding on the ball. And with horn playing, I think the parallel would be uh, to feel that one is actually the sound, one becomes the sound that is traveling. One has to just become aware of it and be into it and, of course, uh, um, be fully aware of what's going on, but just to become part of the sound. Yeah, that, that's really great. Uh, um, Heidi just wrote, horn player should earn $100 million for nailing the, op the opening of Oberon. <laughs> 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 totally true, totally true. Um, Francis said he finds dancing really helpful while, with putting emotions into anything he plays. That's absolutely true. I agree. I'd love to dance, unfortunately, on stage. Although sometimes we move a little bit with the music. We have some great moments, don't we, Stefan? Yeah. Um, some really good sort of funky moments that it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, who's conducting? We manage. We have a little old boogie yeah. going on on stage. Um, <laughs> um, and Jez, actually, for everyone watching, um, the music course was in the railway station at Roland's Eck, which was then an art gallery. There were string players from Israel and wind players from Europe. It was a fantastic experience. So that's when you played Siegfried's Hall Call every night, nailed the top C didn't get paid for it and don't remember much about it. Yeah, <laughs> I remember Roland's Eck was great though. <laughs> Thanks for that. If you're watching on Facebook, it's great to see where you're watching from. Daniel Fonseca from Argentina, Annalisa Solanis from Sydney in Australia. It's late for you over there. Um, it's uh, Jen Robbins has joined. Uh, George has joined. It's great to see you all. Um, I'm getting the, the good questions, uh, the really juicy questions here on my iPad on the website. Um, and and there's, there's interest in horn stuff, but there's also interest in tennis stuff right now. Do you think Roger Federer will, Federer will win another Grand Slam, asks Jakob. I think he will. It depends how soon he gets back to playing. But I think if, if, if one gets to playing in the winter, then he could very well win another Grand Slam. Tennis, is, tennis, tennis is a good socially distant uh, uh, yeah. sport. Yeah. yeah. It's really perfect. Um, good. The other thing I really like from the inner game of, uh, well, th they put it into the inner game of music was there was sort of also a physical thing. It's like, you know, patting your head and rubbing your tummy. Yeah. If you imagine another, for example, what I found very helpful was like in like Cosi Fan Tutti where you go, da -da 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 -da, and if you yeah. get really into your fingers and it gets like really stiff, I just imagine, you know, just, just think of your, think of another part. Think of the end of your elbow or something. It takes the yeah. tension away and stops the tension getting into your... Yeah. into your fingers. There's, there's a lot of good tips in there, isn't there? Yeah. Well, the way Mumford Clear played them, the just second valve on the F horn. <laughs> Don't worry about those fingers. <laughs> he, did, he could play, and also his Beethoven octet. Manfred Clear was, was yeah. my predecessor in the Berlin Philharmonic. And he was, he was such a natural, incredible horn player, really. He was the first low horn player who I heard that didn't really sound muddy. You know what I mean? But, but he had a very special hand position, didn't he? It was like yeah. this. Exactly, yes. He played like that because he had really big paws and, uh, and, and he played like that. And I don't know how he did it with intonation. I guess he was just always in tune. Yeah, well, it, it works better in the, in the low register 
than in the upper register. Of course. Stefan, I have a little hat here in your honor. I like to decorate because Stefan Yatirski has really cool hats. Oh, I should have had my hat. I had such a nice, cool blue hat. But okay, uh, next time, next, next time. time. Next time. Um, uh, Jackie wants to know, do you sometimes fight against self one who is inside your mind and says, you have the wrong notes when you play the horn? I think sports people, musicians, they all have this. Constant battle and one just has to uh, just not fight oneself. You know, just, just let oneself be the best one can be and not, you know, the voices of, of, of doubt and criticism, put them somewhere in the back and just be into it and with confidence and, and you know, just hope for the best. That's when the, one gets the be best results, if one just goes for it. And yeah. you know, there are times, I think, when everybody is a little bit apprehensive. There are situations that one maybe is apprehensive with reason, like maybe the lip is not feeling good to rehearse all day and then have to play a difficult concert. And, uh, or, or, you know. I always think of Freudus in those moments because Freudus wrote this book called Thoughts on Playing the Horn Anyway. Uh, well, anyway, you know, uh, oh no, her book's called no. Thoughts on Thoughts yeah, Playing the Horn Well. Yeah, but someone in our horn room, no names, has put, oh well. Thoughts on Playing the Horn. Oh, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a section on it where she, it's a great section when she says, okay, the excuses. You've got a great t shirt with that. I think you even wore it on one of the horn hangouts about. All my, all my uh, excuses, yeah. The best it. ones are? Yeah, um, my valve was sticking. Oh, Sarah, are you there? I'm here. I can see you. Okay. I can see you. All right. I just, just something was on. Um, you're still with us. Is yeah. he still with us, everyone? Yeah, Let me know. Cool. Are you, am I here? Yes. Yes, I'm here. you're here. You're here. You're definitely here. Uh, it, things like um, my valve was sticking. Uh, I didn't know the transposition changed. Uh, I have water in my horn. I didn't know we were repeating. And I like the last one. The last one is the best. I don't like this piece anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all good excuses, but the thing is, no one cares about the excuses when you're sitting on stage. You have to play yeah. as well as you can anyway. So yeah, that's just part of playing the horn. And 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 I get and it's it's like tennis and it's like golf and these sports. You get one chance in the concert, yeah. and that that is stressful. You know, it is it is a tough thing to deal with, isn't it? Yeah. And we we don't have the million dollars at the end of it when we win something. No, we just have to find ways of it not being too stressful for us. I personally like to enjoy playing the horn, so I'm willing to maybe practice a bit more, at least more than I used to, so that I can, when I'm on stage with my fantastic colleagues, that I feel that I'm, you know, playing my part um, well and that I enjoy it. And you know, it's a matter of, um, you know, nervousness. If one's nervous, one can still usually as a professional still play reasonably well most of the time but uh it's just less fun it's more enjoyable when it's, hey let's go let's play this piece uh, you know and mm. that i think that's the goal is to so that one is prepared enough nervousness comes from being not prepared and having the fear that something might uh, be uh suboptimal yeah that, that that's a horrible feeling to be on stage with that feeling yeah. That's to, that's to be avoided at all costs. That feeling of yes. being non-prepared. We'll go to great lengths to avoid that, and even if it means practicing, rehearsing <laughs> the, the piece. <laughs> Gail, Gail has said he's got a question for you, Gail Williams. It's so we're so honored to have you with us, Gail. You are such a great supporter of the Horn Hangouts. Thank you, J uh, Stefan. Have you read the James Lure Mental Toughness in Sports? Great tennis and music uh, correlations. That's one I'm, we're going to have to no, get. I need to read that. Yeah, definitely. If anyone ha can find a link for that and put that up in the chat, that would be really. Um, yeah, Shelley has just quoted Sarah Willis. Um, Nobody is paying to hear money to hear us try. It's actually not my quote. It was Maria Callas. She said, dear, the audience doesn't pay to hear you try to one of her students who was nervous to go on stage. Well, you know, trying implies failure. That's one of the things Timothy Galway said. So you don't you say, I want to try to play it. You never say, I'm going to try. I'm going to do it. I'm going to play it. And either yeah. it works or it doesn't. But if you say, I'm going to give it a try, that yeah. implies failure. So that's a, a negative mindset. 
Yeah. A good question again from Hadley. Hadley, you're, you're doing some great questions today. When you get down in a tennis match, it's easy to get worse and hard to get better. How do you recover from a cracked note or three in a concert? It's very similar, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, um, okay, one has to, first of all, realize, you know, and hope it's not going to be the last crack note that one plays. And it's, it, it happens, even, you know, the very best players, every now and then, they miss a note. Mm -hmm. It's, it's rare, but it it's can not quite a shock, you know, if Stefan Dorr ever misses a note, we're, yeah. we try and stay cool, but actually inside I'm thinking, you know, I know it's where we're used to such a, a high standard. You know, it's been tradition in the Berlin Philharmonic. We've had incredible solo horn players, and that was one of the things that uh, that I really had to get used to when I first got to the orchestra. Is like, hey, you've got to be really accurate here, otherwise, Gerd Seifert would turn around, give me a dirty look, uh, and uh, you did you not know, want a dirty look from Gerd Seifert. No, I mean, oh. he played amazingly. It was incredibly accurate. And uh, so I just, you know, tried to work hard to, to, to fit in and, you know, be a productive member mm -hmm. of the section. So, so how do you recover from a cracked note? Like how can you use this tennis analogy, um, you know, build yourself back up? I, I find this, the, the principal horns are much better at it than say the seconds or the fourth, because I hang on to all sorts of stuff. The, the Stefan can just, if he makes a mistake, it's gone. I can... That's I can recite every mistake I've ever made over the last 20 years, you know, and that's probably not very healthy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think I can keep track of all the mistakes I made, but, but still, uh, you know, you just got to keep, well, that's one of the advantages of playing principal horn in, in some ways. It's, um, you have so many, so many good, chances. If you mess something else up, then you have another juicy solo. You have another chance to everyone can, you can show how great you play, but if you're playing third horn and you have three notes and you <laughs> screw them up, then your whole evening is ruined. And mm. I don't know. I, I that's why you know it's oh, if I if I do miss something, I just okay. I think I can just go on. Actually, and, Stefan, you do. You're very good at most of the time, but I have often heard expletives under your breath. Not often, but occasionally, and they make me giggle. Yeah. Oh, f for goodness sake! Yeah, yeah. no, that's uh, a. <laughs> I, I, I know that like I'm I don't usually sweat on stage except if I miss a note that I know everyone has heard. Yeah, I oh. that is pours down. Oh, that is so You see is, you guys, we're all we're in the Berlin Phil uh, and people think we don't suffer from these things, but we want you to know that we do. You know, it's 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 a common thing. We all we all have the same problems. We all we're all trying to find that ideal situation. And this is the point of the horn hangouts is to we can only tell you our experience and you know what we do. And we're so lucky to have people like Stefan on it to 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 share this experience. Stefan's been in the Berlin Philharmonic for 42 years. It's incredible. And sitting next to him is that is really sitting next to a legend. And we hope we have many, many more years with him. Um, but it's so nice to be able to share all this with you because uh, you know, one story of where, where I where I sweated the most one of the worst times on stage one of I was the most nervous of all I had to, to jump in and play a concert with uh, the Alpen Symphony and before the break was a Schubert Symphony a uh, colleague was sick I had to it was third horn and there was some so notes alone and the Schubert said yeah this G it's completely by itself and everything like that and and some alone notes and I was really uh and I realized I was on stage and I realized because I had gotten some people in I was expecting to play the second half that I realized my telephone was in my pocket and it was on <laughs> Please, please, no one call me up. I will die. If someone <laughs> calls me up. But I could not reach in my pocket to turn it off because they were like um, four or five bars and then I had to play this entrance. I just couldn't. So I waited. And if you can even see this on Digital Concert Hall, you can see me after this movement. <laughs> <laughs> Andre was sitting next to me. And Andre um, told the first one, wow. Oh, I know it's difficult, but Stefan seems really nervous. What's, what's wrong with him? And <laughs> I told him afterwards. And I was just so relieved to get my phone off. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Never that... go on stage with anything that can make noise. Yes, that's, uh, uh, well, you just got an email by the sound of things. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So no, I think I think it's just so 
it's such a I would love to get Nadal or Roger Federer or someone on the horn hangouts you know just to talk about this this mental preparation I was actually planning um with Yannick uh, Nezik Neze Seguin and, and and Nadal to do a um a program I'm going to bug him about that because I think it would be it would be really interesting to 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 do something like that speaking of Yannick the Met Opera Horns have joined nice to see you guys um Alex Edmondson have jo has joined third horn of the LSO which is lovely and and Thomas Thomas from Sweden you have to tell me how to pronounce your last name because every time I see you I'm happy you're here uh then is that right no it's not I mean I yeah anyway do right so that I can never I never have to mention it wrong before um anyway great that you're all that you're all there um yeah, uh, how about this one? Amateur shipping has asked, horns are just so random and even those with the best control of the horn like you guys still have to cope with the stress of losing control once in a while. Not even Shumi and Hamilton are exempt from crashing their cars once in a while. It's just what we met, just what I said just now, you know, we're all in the same boat, whether you're in the Berlin Philharmonic or in, 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 in school orchestra. It's just there's a little bit more at stake. The potential, yeah. for, potential for humiliation is bigger. <laughs> Well, that's one thing my, my uh, teacher, Myron Bloom, told me. He said, you need two things, knowledge and courage. And he went for it. He, he missed some things. But when he missed, boy, he would miss big sometimes. But when it, he was on, he got the most amazing sound. So it was like kind of a risk. And, and uh, George Zell wanted him to take this risk and make these amazing results. So I learned a lot about that uh, from him, just to, to, to go for it. It's actually, it's amazing that... It's, so little uh, is that we mess up so little as we do, uh, you know, so far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good. Don't, shh, don't yeah, say good. that. <laughs> we, are, um, we're, we actually have a horn quartet rehearsal on Wednesday and we're so excited. I'm looking forward to that. Great. Yeah, me too. We can't wait. We've got some exciting plans, which we will share with you soon. Um, but we're just so happy to meet and play, play through some stuff. I don't know if any of you saw the brass ensemble concert on the weekend. Uh, it was so much fun to play again, but it was so painful because brass ensemble is hard enough as it is, but you know, after seven weeks of lockdown, oh my goodness. Um, but anyway, looking forward to seeing you guys then. Um, Stefan, what else? I wanted to ask just again, um, you know, we were going to talk about coming back from an injury, but you know what, let's do that another time because you, you, have, you have to go quite soon to play yeah. tennis. And this is such an interesting discussion, I think, the similarities between sport and, um, and, and, and horn playing or musicianship in general. Let's just stay with this today, I think, rather than getting onto this very complex embouchure and injury. And, but oh, yeah. we'll, we'll definitely do that another day. We're here for a while. So, um, Great. so um, but uh, the, the, the playing sports, just actually as a musician, you were one of the best, best examples of this that I know. Stefan, Dor uh, Stefan Yuzilski is the only person in our horn section who hasn't had back problems, you know? It's just like, is it because you've done so much sport over the years, do you think, to balance out? Part of it is, okay, I've, I've been doing uh, sport regularly. You know, I'm a tennis freak, and I, in order to tennis, you get really crooked. If you don't be careful to you know, use this one side, it's asymmetrical. So I go to the fitness studio, to, Try to make sure that I, you know, horn playing can be, you know, it's, it, it, yeah, I miss the fitness studios are closed now, but it really helps to keep my back, you know, balanced and uh, generally to have, so I have enough uh, strength reserve so I can be as relaxed as possible. But, um, you know, the, I think one thing that, that I do also, which helps the back is I, I always lean against the chair somewhat. And I've read, actually, this is supposed to be pretty good. Instead of sitting up completely straight, it's important that the upper back is not, you know, that one can expand the back to breathe. But I like to sort of sit back and be very comfortable when, I, uh, when I'm playing. And so this, maybe this also takes some of the stress off the back. This, this needs a few more, like another half an hour to discuss because What's also really important about the horn hangouts is that we can only tell you what's worked for us. And that doesn't necessarily mean that's the right thing for you. For example, I would never let any of my students play with their backs against a chair because for me, especially not having such a, you know, I, I'm, I've got shorter legs. So if I sat back in the chair, then my legs wouldn't be on the ground. It's really important to have both legs on the ground, flat on the floor. And the only way I can do that is by sitting up and not sitting back in the chair. If people do sit back in the chair, there's 
they're sitting back in the chair because it's better to play and they're sitting back in the chair because you're lazy you know there's you know, there's a difference Montford and the people clear would also lean back pardon Montford clear would also lean back later. but but you guys are all big guys and you yeah. have you have you're sitting on chairs and you can i can't if i lean the lean back on the chair i'd be like yeah, this everyone has to find what works for them it just did the, the thing exactly there's so many different ways of yeah. playing horn and sitting and uh, there are certain things that are, that are the same with all uh, top players, but there yeah. are many yeah. variables, and one has to everyone has to find their way of dealing with yeah. the situation. Sophia in Hobart in Tazi, hello, Sophia. It's very late at night for you there. Do you guys find that playing cardio intensive sports helps with stamina and lung capacity when playing the horn? Yes. Yes. Is the answer to that? Yes. And. It's it's just especially actually something really interesting when we, we had the global trombone, trombone horn hangout a few weeks ago and Charlie Vernon, who's now in his 70s, um, the bass trombone player of the Chicago Symphony, and he was saying how, how much he missed swimming because he would swim and swim. He has an enormous lung capacity, but he said he could feel it was not working as well in the time that the pools were closed. And he said to us all, he said, okay, you younger things, make sure you're doing your cardio now because later it gets an awful lot more difficult. That's true, yeah. Yeah? So, Stefan, what, what would you, tennis is cardio. Tennis is cardio, but tennis is like, is fun uh, also. It, it depends on how one plays tennis, if it's cardio. Sometimes if it's a, a good game with long rallies, it's cardio. Sometimes the points are quick and it's not so much cardio. So I think as far as, um, Okay, if one plays all, two hours of singles, it's probably usually enough of a cardio workout. One can find the people to play ten, play a certain way of tennis so you get a workout. But I think also very good for um, brass players are swimming, running, cycling, and a uh, cross trainer. I have a cross trainer here in my studio here. You can see that. Is it opposite a TV, I hope? Uh, oh, you bet. I mean, oh, the TV's <laughs> on. Also, when I'm doing my warm up, usually the TV's on, I must admit. It, shh, don't it, tell you it, didn't hear also, that everybody you it's didn't hear that. also would play practice in front of the tv so i'm in good company there and yeah. uh, Chef, Chef, you've, been, like you've, been, the you've been in the berlin phil for 42 years you're allowed to practice with the tv on i wouldn't recommend it for students so much they need to listen to their it sound but... technical stuff not what i'm referring to something musical and often i just i turn the sound off and i don't even look at the tv but i just have it on just you know i think i i want to have my time in the practice room be fun can you just tip your head back like no no, no sideways do that no other way and a bit further it looks like you've got that's it it looks like you've got ears because you're two bells that looks really cool can you see oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the mickey mouse ears <laughs> i got it i got it you guys got it too <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, John Harris says, as a horn player who previously studied physiotherapy, I believe that some sort of physical exercise is essential for all musicians for more reasons than can be listed in a short message. Here, here. The main thing is to find a sport that you enjoy. That is true. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, find it, I find it hard because I don't do sports because I like it. I really don't. I wish I did. And everyone says, find a sport you enjoy. I haven't. The only thing I really like is dancing. Um, in, in quarantine, that was a little difficult. No one, you know, no one would dance with me. Um, but uh, even walking up the stairs, you know, I live on the sixth floor. So I made make myself do that. That's a, good sport, yeah. That's a good sport. But yeah, how do you find a sport that you, that, how well, did you find tennis? Why tennis? You know, I had played a bit of tennis beforehand, and then um, in the in my colleagues in the orchestra, Monfred Clear said, "Hey, uh, let's go play tennis." Mm. And so I had my old wooden racket, which I still I can show you that I have it right here. Oh yeah, show us your old wooden ra racket. <laughs> still with the original strings. Oh it's yes. Cool. Oh, you can imagine you with you know your little shorts and then your your white your white yeah. sweater over your shoulder tied you know. No. <laughs> but Stefan, I know you have to go. You've got a tennis match at four o'clock, and it's now twenty-five two. So everybody, we're going to have to call it um, a day for the horn hangouts today. Um, I hope at five o'clock Andrew Bain is doing his online warm up. If any of you want to join that, I, I he you have to send an email to theinvestedmusician.com. If any of you are doing that, maybe you can put the. Um, put the address in the chat, but pop on over there at five o'clock and see him. And on Friday night, we are getting a load of low horn players together. I'm not exactly sure yet who, 
but um, I've written to a few and we're going to do the best we can to get some low horn players. Actually, Stefan, you could probably join because you're low horn. Yeah. He always plays like three octaves lower and <laughs> really um, you've got to go, huh? You've got your, you, you, you're going to show us what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but you, I mean, play down to the A flat. I'm working on it to get a G. But. That was a little one. And just a quick word before you go. Right at the very beginning, someone asked about your jazz. Now, how do you, can you can you tell us again what the name of that that app is that you play jazz to? iReal Pro. iReal Pro. I've downloaded it yeah. now. I love it. It's really it's so cool. Much fun just to play tunes and to, to jam a little bit with the chords and. If I don't feel like practicing, and I don't want to do like scales or coprash, then I get out the iReal Pro and I play some tunes. I, you know, I have a, I can play a, quite a few from memory now and a jam on yeah. them a bit. Yeah, and great. My big jazz concert in the spring was canceled. I was going to play with together with David Friedman, the world famous. Oh, he's amazing. Uh, Oh, what a shame. Oh, well, but Stefan, get your, what, what do you, what have you got to take? Because it's, it's selfie time, everybody. It's the Monday right. morning selfie. I'm going to wear my, uh, no, I'm not going to wear the hat. I don't think it's fallen down anyway. So with Stefan, that's right. Stefan's about to go and play tennis. So you have a horn in one hand, a tennis racket in the others. I have nothing interesting to put on or wear right now. So I'm just going to have to, and then even not that. Okay, right. It's going on my shoulder. Okay, right. And the horn in the other hand, where is it? There we go. We're all ready for your selfie. Okay, and one, two, three, everybody say Stefan Yatsilski. <laughs> Thanks, Stefan. You've been absolutely amazing. I, I miss Thank you so you much. I miss you so much. Thank you for doing the horn hangout today. I'll see you on Wednesday. I'll see you on Wednesday. I'm really excited for that. And we'd love to get you back to talk about, you know, um, about, you know, building up after after an injury and stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's an interesting topic. And that's happened to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah we, we, we can talk about that gladly sometime. Great. Okay. <laughs> He's literally off to play a tennis match. I absolutely love that. See you guys at either five o'clock at Andrew's warm up or next uh, on Friday, next Friday, 9 p.m. Berlin time for the usual Friday night craziness. Did any of you see the Friday night cooking show? It almost killed me, but it was fantastic. You, you, I was watching. It was really cool. Thanks for joining us, everybody. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye, Sarah. Thank you. Bye bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.